I'm Colleen. I've been making my own sourdough bread for about four years now. I bake once or twice a week, two loaves at a time. I've kept this recipe very simple, and it's for you if you just want to make healthy bread for your family without spending tons of time or getting flour all over your kitchen. Our ancestors baked bread without scales and exact measuring tools and precise ovens, and so can you. I've been doing it this way for four years without one single complaint. As you get better at it and maybe addicted to the bread or you're interested in trying other recipes, you can use some of those artisan techniques. But for now, this recipe will allow you to just get started. This recipe doesn't call for exact measurements or a sink full of dirty dishes. Just pour about one half cup of starter into three cups of filtered water. Add a bit of honey or maple syrup. This doesn't sweeten the bread, it just wakes up the yeast and kick starts fermentation. Stir or whisk until the starter and honey dissolve. In a large measuring bowl, add about six cups of flour. My favorite is King Arthur's organic bread flour, but you can use regular all-purpose or mix with whole wheat, rye, or other flour. Experiment to find what works best for you. I say about six cups because flours vary in the amount of water they absorb. Don't worry about exact measurements. Look for the ideal dough consistency and adjust accordingly. For this recipe, I also add about a half a cup of ground flaxseed. This boosts fiber and omega-3s, yet still feels like white bread. You can play with your own additions. Finally, add about a teaspoon of salt. Mix the dry ingredients together. Pour in the starter, water, and honey. Mix with a spatula until it becomes difficult. Then, wet your fingers and finish by hand. There is one other ingredient to add here, and that is love. Baking bread for your family is healing. Getting your hands a little dirty and working with Mother Nature is spiritual. You don't have to make bread. You get to make bread. Be grateful. As needed, re-wet your fingers to minimize stickiness. The dough will become a shaggy mass. Remember though, this is an art. If the dough still runs between your fingers, add more flour. Just know that whole wheat flour and other flours take more time to absorb water, so give it a few minutes to be sure. Too much flour turns out flat and dense loaves. It doesn't have to be perfect. Cover your dough with a wet towel. I use one that holds a lot of water and I double it over to ensure that it doesn't dry out. Finally, feed your starter. For this recipe, maintain one cup of starter in the refrigerator. We used one half cup in the recipe. So now, feed the other half with one half cup of flour and one half cup of filtered water. Top it with a loose fitting lid and store it in the refrigerator. Fermentation time will vary based on flour type, kitchen temperature, and the liveliness of your starter. Ideally, the dough is punchy, springy, and deflates when you touch it. After a few baking cycles, you'll learn to identify the ideal amount of fermentation time based on how the dough feels. I recommend that you try one of two approaches. Either start the dough in the evening and bake in the morning, or start the dough in the morning and bake in the evening. My ideal window is about 12 to 16 hours, but it's really pretty flexible. Good enough is still better than anything you can buy at the store. This no-need recipe doesn't require you to spread flour everywhere and shape the dough or wait for a second rise. Just work it around a bit right in the bowl and transfer directly to two normal sized bread pans. If you keep your hands wet, you can avoid a lot of stickiness. If you don't have silicone bakeware, make sure to oil your bread pans. Most sourdough recipes do recommend a second rise, and feel free to do that. I'm going to do both so that you can see there isn't much difference. You can actually skip the second rise 
and get similar results by simply placing the bread directly into a non-preheated oven. I think that preheat time gives the yeast a quick boost. Bake at 375 to 400 degrees, and if you use convection, reduce that by 25 degrees. Set your timer for 40 minutes. Bake until internal temperature reaches 190 degrees. If you don't have a thermometer, bake at 400 for 50 minutes the first time and see how that goes. Immediately remove the bread from the pan so that it doesn't get soggy and allow it to thoroughly cool. Do not slice into a hot loaf of bread as tempting as it is because the internal steam is still cooking. I allowed this second loaf to rise for about two hours. As you can see, it stuck to the towel a bit. When this happens, just be gentle and try to disturb the dough as little as possible. This time, I baked in a preheated oven for 40 minutes at 375 degrees convection. It's always a good idea to make sure the internal temperature is 190 degrees before removing it. Again, remove it immediately from the pan and resist the urge to slice into it until it's cool. As you can see, these loaves turned out almost identical. And while they won't win a blue ribbon for artisan sourdough at the state fair, this easy, no-need recipe serves its purpose in a delicious and healthy way.